A super important part of your Part 107 test is going to be reading aviation weather reports. Typical reports are reported in METAR as well as PIREPS. METAR is an aviation routine weather report and a PIREP or PIREPs is going to be pilot weather reports. A METAR, M-E-T-A-R, Aviation Routine Weather Report, it typically precedes the report itself. Now if you see an S-P-E-C-I, uh, this can be issued in between reports. So instead of it saying METAR, it would say S-P-E-C-I, and this would just be like something that's updated. So an example of a METAR report is this right here. Now. I'm going to scroll down and give you this description of everything after we look at this. So I'm going to keep this on the screen for now and I'm going to go through all of the individual sections inside of here. So you know exactly what everything is and then we'll scroll down and then we can read through some examples. So first we have the type of report. This is a METAR report. Uh, if it's Again, if it's S-P-E-C-I, it means it's an updated report. You next have K-G-G-G. Now this is variable, the GGG part. The K is also somewhat variable, but in the 48 states, it's going to start with the letter K. If you're dealing with Alaska, it's gonna start with PA. Hawaii, it'll start with PH. I like to think of it as, if for Alaska, Pacific Alaska, that's where the PA comes from. And then you guessed it, for Hawaii, Pacific Hawaii. They're always going to have three letters after that and that's just going to be the code for the specific airport so it's always going to be different so those are important the next important part is the date and time it's this next portion right here 16 17 53 of course this is going to change for every report you look at the first two digits are the day itself currently so it's the 16th day of the month and then we have Zulu time. That's what the Z is for at the end. So the next four digits are that time. 1753 Zulu time. So this is just like an international standard time. Next is our modifier. So our modifier, we can see right here, it's auto. If the report is auto generated, it's going to say auto. If it says A01, it's going to be a no precipitation disclaimer. If it says A02, will have a precipitation disclaimer. More information on this will be shown in the remark section. If it doesn't say auto, or if it doesn't say AO1 or AO2, and it says COR instead, it means the report has been updated or corrected to fix an error. That's this first part, and next we have wind. So the first three digits are going to be the direction of the wind. So for this example, it's 140 degrees. The next two digits indicate the wind speed. So it's 140 degrees and the current speed is 21 knots. It's always measured in knots. The G stands for gusting. This isn't always there, but if there is a G, that means gusting, which is a higher wind speed. And the two digits reported after that are going to be the peak gust speed. So you have 26 and all this is again measured in knots. So that's what the KT at the end is for. If the gust direction is greater than 60 degrees, and the speed itself is greater than six knots, like how it is right here, but I guess the wind direction isn't greater than 60 degrees, you'll have a separate group of numbers, and the separate group of numbers is going to be separated by a V, and it will indicate extremes. So if you have a V in here, and you have a, uh, a number, it's going to indicate an extreme gust. But currently for this example, at 140 degrees, we have a wind speed of 21 knots, and then it's gusting as well at 26 knots. Next is visibility, which is super important. It's reported in statute miles. We've heard this a lot before. So this is 3 fourth statute miles. It's reported in whole as well as fraction numbers. Sometimes RVR, which was runway visibility range, is reported afterwards. And it's basically how far a pilot can see down a runway. If shown, we're gonna have an R after this, then the runway number, a slant, and then the actual visual range. Uh, we can look down a little bit for number six. Uh, it'll look something like this. You see R17L, that's the runway, and then you have how far you can see down the runway, which is 1,400 feet. Next, we have actual weather, and it can be broken down into two categories. You have qualifiers 
as well as weather phenomenon. First is the qualifiers, and this is of intensity, proximity, as well as description of the weather are given. For this example, you see a plus in front of here. Well, you could have either a minus sign, nothing in front, or the plus. The minus sign means if the weather is light, if it's moderate, it's not going to have anything in front of it. If it's a plus, it means the weather is heavy. So here, the weather is going to be heavy. Now, all of this is pretty much weather that we're going to look at. I'm going to scroll down because there is a chart, but remember, you have your plus, which indicates it's heavy. T, S, R, A, those are two separate things. You also have B, R, and we'll get into what this next stuff means in a second, but just pay attention to specifically this right now, and just keep this in the back of your mind, as well as this. So let's scroll down to so number seven, you have a little chart here. So you have your qualifiers, so just the intensity as we were talking about. Then we have our descriptor, the next part. So we have M, I, I don't know how they came up with these two letters that represent the next part, but just go with it, you have to remember it. MI is for shallow, I think of MI as like minimum. BC is for patches, DR is low drifting. BL, that one's easier, it's blowing. SH, showers. TS, thunderstorms. FZ, freezing. And PR is partial. See, when they go like halfway down, it gets a little bit easier, but like, why is BC patches? I don't get it, but you gotta remember it. So that's the descriptor two. You also have precipitation. So DZ is drizzle, RA is rain, SN is snow. If you have snow grains, it's SG. Ice crystals, also called diamond dust, is IC. Ice pellets are PL. GR is going to be hail. GS is small hail or snow pellets. And then UP is unknown precipitation. You have an obscuration 4. And here you'll have BR for mist. FG for fog, FU for smoke, DU for dust, SA for sand, HZ for haze, PY for a spray, and VA for volcanic ash. Others that you might encounter would be PO, which means dust or sand whirls. You have SQ, which is squalls. FC is a funnel cloud. If you have a plus FC, it's going to be a tornado or water spout. SS is sandstorm, and then DS is going to be a dust storm. So let's look back at our example that we have right here. We have a plus indicating we have some heavy weather. TS is thunderstorms. RA is going to be rain. BR is for mist. So we have heavy thunderstorm, heavy rain, as well as heavy mist in the sky. After this, so our weather part right here, we're going to have sky conditions. Very closely related, that's why I told you to keep this part in the back of your mind. You have BKN008 and then OVC012CB. We're about to go over what these mean. So for sky conditions, it's going to be reported in the following. You have amount, height, and then vertical visibility. The heights of cloud bases are reported with a three-digit number in the hundreds of feet above ground level. So that'll be something like this. Three digits, but in the hundreds of feet. So really, for this one, it's going to be 800. For this one, also three digits, and then in the hundreds, so this one's going to be 1,200. And this is above ground level. The amount of sky coverage is reported in eighths of the sky from the horizon to the horizon. And so let's go down to number eight. We have a good example here. Uh, we have broken at 800, overcast at 1,200 CB, and then for this one, we have VV003. Types of clouds that are specified are TCU, which are towering cumulus, and then CB, which is a cumulonimbus clouds. Those are two you're going to have to watch out for. If we look at this chart here, you have a sky cover. So if it's less than 1 8 it's clear. And this is represented with SKC, which is sky clear, CLR, which is clear, or FEW, which is few. 1 8 to 2 8 sky cover, uh, so this is clouds, is few, 3 8 to 4 8 is scattered, 5 8 to 7 8 is broken, 8 8 so a full uh, ton of sky cover is just overcast. So for something like this, we have, again, sky conditions are measured in amount. So the first is going to be broken 800, the next is overcast at 1200, so that's a lot of clouds. 
Now let's look at temperature and dew point. We go on to this next part right here. We have 18 and then 17. Uh, this is always how temperature and dew point is going to be measured. It's measured in Celsius. Temperatures below zero are going to be preceded with an M. It's for minus. And this is temperature slash dew. So that's how you would look at that. Uh, the next is this A and then a four digit number. Now A stands for altimeter settings. It's reported in inches of mercury. It's a four digit number group preceded by the letter A. Rising and falling temperature of the altimeter is going to be indicated in the remarks. And this is actually what we have here. So if it's rising, we're gonna have pressure rising, which is P-R-E-S-R-R. -E -R. These are super similar, rising and falling. Falling is going to be P R E S F R. So the only difference is rising versus falling in the acronym. Only one letter changes. Remember, this is all measured in Zulu time. Next is our remarks, which is basically talking about the altimeter settings. Now, remarks are going to begin with remark or RMK, what we have here. Comments may or may not appear afterwards. And what's included? Well, included is wind data, variable visibility, beginning and end times to specific phenomenon, pressure information, and anything else that could be important to a safe flight. So this, that was just a summation, right? Here are the full notes, if you would like to take a look at them, all down here. We did look at some of these a little bit, uh, but that's going to be it for this section. Next, we're going to look at aviation forecasts. And then we're going to look at convective significant meteorology information. Uh, we should be able to do that in the same video. And that's going to be it for chapter 3A, aviation weather sources.